Today, what the Lord wants to speak to us is divine provision in the time of need. Anytime we, we, we lack things, God is here to provide for us. Even he said in that uh, Philippians 4 19, we have read it when we are doing the prayer, but he said he will supply us all our needs, all our needs, according to his riches in Christ Jesus. God promised it, and God is a faithful God. He will never say a thing and not bring it to pass. It's not a man that will tell a lie. All things are possible in his kingdom. So my brothers and my sisters, my daddy, I know you know and you will continue to know that God will pro has been your provision and he will continue to provide for you. He has never failed. He's the same yesterday, today, and evermore. Now, he, that God who provides for all our needs, he loves you so much. He knows what you need. Even if you were here on, on Friday, when Pastor Abayomi was ministering, he said before man was created, God has provided for all that we needed. All that you are needed have been provided for before you were made. Because he doesn't want us to lack anything. But I want to tell you that still our God will never fail his word. Most of our problem is ourselves. We are the architect of our own fortune. If there is a misfortune in our life, we caused it. For instance, when Ad Adam was made, he was given instruction, but he failed that instruction. It is that failure that disobedience that brought all the calamities, all the diseases, and uh, defeat in his life, and which we inherited. So we are the architect. We made it. And even despite Jesus has come, the, because God loves us so much, he sent us his, be, uh, his begotten son. To redeem us from sin. To cleanse us from those sin nature. To deliver us that we will be able to attain the level he, he made for us. God is a holy God. He does not, he does not like to, for, uh, uh, to look at sin. He, he hates sin. And he doesn't want to come closer to sin. And even when his son, Jesus Christ, carried the sin of the whole world upon himself and gave his righteousness to man, God the Father turned his back to him on the cross. That was when Jesus said, Father, Father, do not forsake me. You see, God had to turn his back to him because God does not, uh, uh, he does not uh, see sin. He doesn't look at sin. He doesn't for, uh, behold sin. And therefore, many of us, we have been doing what God does not want us to do. And man wants to do something that he wants to do. Despite the instruction of God, 
He will not follow the instruction of God. He wants to do his own thing. God said, even he, 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 he wants us, he said, we should not covet. Kamache Ojukokuru. Kamache Ojukokuru. We should not covet. And now, and that is what man is doing today. Look, let us see the way even Christ, when he was teaching us, teaching the disciples how to pray. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Not what his generation will take. Not what the, his generation will, will be using. Like corruption that is going on in Nigeria today, that you see people packing dollars, pounds, inside soccer way. And then, because they are covetous. The money that they cannot even spend in their own lifetime. They are keeping it for their own children. Children, children to come. You can see, that is our problem. Most of the, 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 the our problem, why, when we, when we say provision, he has, he has said it, he will provide for you. Let us see Abraham. The case of Abraham, we also read it. Abraham, let us see uh, uh, Genesis 22. I want to read 13 to 14. Let us see it. Genesis 22, 13 to 14. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his arms. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Now, you will see that even this child that Abraham used as offering, he got, God gave him that child when he was 100 years old. Then that child was so precious to him. It was at his old age that even he too has written himself off that he could not get a child anymore. But on that day, God visited him. Say, I will give you a child. Now, God gave him that child. When that child was about 13, that he could work, could do things, God saw that the love Abraham had for him before has reduced. Because you cannot love two things together. He has shifted his love to the son. The person early in the morning before you will seek the face of God, you will see everything, you will, everything he has is connected to God. But now he has shifted that. Is uh, when he wakes up in the morning, whom he wants to see is Isaac. Anything, anytime, Isaac. Uh -huh. And you know God is a jealous God. God says, okay, want to see whom you love. You say you love me, say yes. That go and sacrifice that your son for me. That your son is what you should use as sacrifice. And you can see how obedient Abraham was. That's why it was his old age. And Abraham will be about 103, 113 then. And he says, okay, he took the child. What did he do? He, because he believed God gave him me this child and if he, if he said I should sacrifice, I will sacrifice I want to see that miracle he's going to do I know even if I kill him, sacrifice him this child will come up again and become a man and be what I want he wants him to be 
He know whom he was asked. And that's why God wants to, he want to test you. He want to prove you. He want to prove you. If you love him. And the following morning, without telling his wife, because I know, hey, Sarah wouldn't have said yes. You can't. Kill me. Instead of I sacrifice me, I'm sorry, I, will, I will go on that altar for you. But that is, it is not Sarah that God wanted. He knows that that is what Sarah would have said. But he said, yes, Sarah, and we are going for sacrifice. Then took some servants and with a stick, oh yeah, Isaac, let go. And when they got there, they came down. They were seeing the mountain in front, a stone throw. Told the servants to wait. Isaac carry the wood. Take the, uh, the, the, the father, Abraham, took the knife and fire. Then Isaac said something. Uh -uh. Daddy, something is missing. Say, what is missing? Uh -uh. I can see the wood. I can see the knife, I can see the fire, but where is the lamp? <laughs> the Abraham laughed, he said, God shall provide his lamp. <laughs> you can see, that is why we say, God's eyes. G, uh, Abraham has the eyes of God. He could see far. And that is why we, as believers, we should not speak anything negative. He said it, God will provide. And will God now prove himself not to provide? God will do it. Because he has said God will do it and God will do it. So they went there to where he said, let us go there. He, he, did not, he didn't see any ram. He built, his, his, he built the tent, uh, the, the altar. Then he took Isaac and bound him. He bound him. Uh, and you know, a boy of 13 will be very strong to give it to run yes. to somebody who is at 113. But he did not struggle. He submitted himself. He know that this is my father. I know he loves me. And if he feels that I should be a sacrifice for the, his God, here am I. So he too submitted to his own earthly father. So this is submission. Every, every one of them was submitting. So we have to know that submission and obedience, God is waiting for it in everything we do. And now, he bound him, laid him, as he stretched his hand to take the knife. Then the voice says, now I know you love me. That is, he got which shows God was waiting to know whether he loves him or not. Now I can know. This is why God is searching the heart of man. Who, who can know it? Nobody. You can, uh, we cannot know the heart of any man. It's only God. And God is also all the time searching it. And it is through tests through trial that he knows who man is. Man can be somebody today and by tomorrow you are seeing a different person. Husband does not know the wife until even for the years you have lived together. Let our daddy now by the time he saw our mommy, it, it, he just accepted her. Yes, let us marry each other. It's okay. But every day he's watching her to see if. And also mommy is also watching daddy. If actually 
he loves her. You can see each one of them we are saying, if not by time, the time will have to, it will show whether actually is a deep love or a partial love. Do you understand? So, but it is now that mommy can say, actually, this daddy, my husband, loves me. Since we have met, he has never disappointed me. And daddy also will say, now that I'm old, and yet you are still following me, you have not back, you have not backpedal. Now I know you love me. It is now that daddy will know that he loves him. At the time of need, and at that time, as he heard that voice, now I know you love me. Do not, do not touch that your son. As he said it, he looked up. He looked up. What did he look? He looked unto God. And God opened his eyes. And it was then he saw a ram that is just a stone throw. Just by the altar. He's caught in the ticket there. Which shows that ram was not just created. He had been created... He had been brought there even before he got there. The thing had been caught, but he didn't see it. But it was then it is opened. I say your eyes shall be opened for God's miracle today in Jesus' name. Amen. We are only praying for God to open our eyes to see the profession of God that is around us. There are still billions of billions of doors of opportunity. Doors of opportunity that is around us, which has never been discovered. But waiting for one, God to open your eyes to see it. I say your eyes shall be opened Amen. today in Jesus' name. Amen. Even if that is hell, oh, I am old. Yes, it's old in age, but in, in the heart, it's still young. Eh? Abraham was 100 years when God visited him. God, the Lord will visit, it, will visit you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, God's provision, without God, nobody receives anything. Nobody receives anything. I want to read John whether you can read it for me there or put it on the screen. John 10, 10. He said the thief cometh not to, is, is to, 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 to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he, the Lord, has come to give life and to give it more abundantly. Now, you will see the two has come. Satan came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus came to give life. It is that life that is attached to prosperity. Every prosperity is attached to life. Good health is attached to life. Uh, victory is attached to life. Because it's a package that is in salvation. It's a package of salvation, of life. Which Satan wants to steal. And Satan that has come, he took the prosperity that is part of the package that is in salvation. He used it in order to use it to destroy mankind. 
Many people got destroyed today through prosperity. They are looking for money. At any way, anyhow. And Satan will show you money. Fake. And that is why 3 John 2, 3 John 2 says, You shall, I wish above all things, that you will prosper and be in health as your soul prospereth. Are you getting me? Yes. It is as your soul prospereth. That soul prospereth is life. If you, if your soul is prosper in God, if your soul is connected to God and prospers, it will attract prosperity. It will attract good health. It will attract victory. And all things you needed in life is in it as your soul prospered. But Satan, he has come to destroy man and he is now showing the, the, uh, the, the, the physical things which he knows that people are looking for. He knows what we are looking for. It is that one he showed to us. And some people are now running after that. And that is why you see so many churches these days that are for Satan. They are the, they are the agent of darkness. All they talk about is prosperity. They never talk of the kingdom of God. Jesus did not preach prosperity. How come a the disciple preaching prosperity? Prosperity is part of the jara, part of the attachment that is in, in Christ, uh, in uh, salvation. That is why he said in Matthew 6, 33, he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added. You can see, kingdom of God and the righteousness of God, they are life, which brings all other things that are added to it. But people, instead of them to seek those things, they are seeking for the bread. And anyone that is seeking for the bread, Satan will deceive you. He will show you the bread and perverts the word of God. Perverts the word of God. Pollute the word of God. And the, that person will go the wrong way. Amen? Amen? So, Abraham, you can see how God provided for him there miraculously. Because he believed in God. And to you who believe in God today, I say God will make provision for you in all, every area you needed him. I've, I've said it many times here, how God provided for me when the time of, when I got to, the, to my zero level in life. All believers, God is not, you want to serve God, God wants to test you. Before I became a believer, I was a contractor. I had my own farm. I had my own farm. I was constructing houses. I had money. And by the time I became a, a man of God, I begin to serve God, that people begin to say, ah, even that time I've, I've not been confirmed to be a pastor. When they see you that you are now walking in the way of God. What you are doing before, you say, no, I don't do it again. That is not me. You are doing a new thing. They say, this man is now 
a pastor. Hey, pastor, pastor. Because anyone that, when you begin to hear that, you know you are in the right path. Amen? Amen. Now, that was exactly what happened. And all that I had before was coming down. All were coming down. Until when I got to zero level. That I had nothing in the bank. And nothing in, in my house. So just on Sunday like this. I was dancing on the altar. Praising God. When we are doing praises. And Satan spoke to me. <laughs> you are praising God. You have no ten cowboy in your in your pocket. It is true. I had no money even to pay for for offering. No ten cobo for offering. And as a pastor, I was a pastor. No ten cobo because I had no money at home. Sunday, I said yes. Then I my spirit came down. Then another spirit now speak. Have I not done more than that for you? Then I said, yes, Lord. He started to remind me what he has done. I started to praise him. I raised up my hand, my two hands. Started to praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tears of joy started to flow down my eyes. Because then Satan know he has lost. But because God is not a magician, not that at that time he put money in my pocket. No, there was no money in my pocket. The service ended, and as the service ended, I was the pastor in charge. I just went upstairs to my apartment, went there to, to they gave me my lunch. I ate, not knowing it was the last lunch. Nothing again. Everything, no gari, no, no, no flour, no soup, no thing, nothing. I didn't know. Because my wife was just bringing her thought, there's still something. Not know it was the last thing. And when it got to, in the morning, about to prepare for me to go out to walk, then my wife told me, there's nothing at home. Why? Why? He brought the, where we put gari, where we put flour, blah, blah, this, everything is empty. And everything empty, no oil, nothing whatsoever. I said, so, okay. I took my Bible. It was this Bible. Because I got this Bible in 1999. Kazi, 1999. Now, even not, not 1989, 1989. I, I took it. I went to the altar. I went to pray. I went to the altar. I said, Father, I am your servant. You know me. Do you want me to go and begin to knock the door of my Member, church members, to be asking there for money, to eat, then I'm dragging your name into the mud. Do not let me drag your name into the mud. At least on Sunday, we they collected money in the in the church. I don't I don't have any connection to the money. I just, they just tell, told me this is what they had that day, and the person who is to take it to bank took it to bank. I'm not interested. But I did me, I'm covetous. I would have told them, bring that money. The Lord needs it. Put it on my table, and it will be done according to, I need it for the church. At that time, I will rope it with something. That the person that works on the altar, where is he going to eat? Is it not on the altar? It's on the altar. 
Uh-huh. They will bring me the money. But I did it. I did it. I know my right, but I didn't use it. But I go to God who appointed me to tell me what to do. I was there, I was praying that someone I never knew who even who can give ten naira. I know him. And I know him that is very so stingy that even to put ten naira in the in the plate, you you, you can't get it from him. He's a stingy man. And then it was that time God used him to bless me that day. He just came, he went upstairs to meet my wife, said he, he wants to see Pastor. Pastor is in the church. He came, he sat down in the church. I saw him, I thought, this man, what has he come to disturb me? He has come to disturb me because I never expect, I never expect anything to come out of him. They said, what, what good will come out of uh, Nazareth? <laughs> Nobody knew. As I go, then I said, let me cut, uh, cut short my prayer to attend to him so that he can go. So that I can have time to, to continue my prayer. Then I said, yes, brother, can I help you? Then he came near me. I saw, saw him pack, carry one bag. Said to say, daddy, I sold my house last night. They brought the money last night. And uh, uh, as I wanted to take it to the bank this morning, my spirit said I should come and to you and you pray for me. And so that you lead me in the how to use it. I says, okay. Kneel down and I pray with him. Take it to the bank. The Lord will see you through. The Lord will breathe his breath into the. I said, the Lord will breathe the, his breath into the, to the money. Say, so. Say amen. He stood up and gave me an envelope. Which envelope? It was 5,000 that was there. Then, it was a lot. I didn't I did know what, how much is there. I made sure that he went out of the gate of the compound. Before I open it, ah, wonders will never end. I close it back. I say, Father, I thank you. The money I'm asking, you have provided it. Thank you, Jesus. No need of another prayer. I just went upstairs. Mommy, now you can go to market. I gave him the whole envelope. Say, where did you get this? I said, <laughs> I, I, then I asked her, did you see gun in my hand? Did I go for robbery? I'm robbery. I went to the altar and he, brought, he came to the altar to me. It's part of my, 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 my right. And, and I never get to that level anymore. I did not get to that level anymore. Even at the time Abayomi was about to travel to this place. You know, I was, I was a civil servant. How much was a civil servant? You all know civil servant, how much is from hand to mouth. How can I get around 300 and something thousand for ticket? For everything? But at that time, when the time came, my friends who were, who knew that he has Canadian passport because he was born in Canada. He was born here. And he had Canadian passport. Then they told, and they knew that he has graduated from university, no job. They phoned me one time. Well, what is he doing at home? If I say he's looking for a job, if he can't get a job, why can't he go to his country? Ah. Well, is it not money that he will use to go to his country? He says okay. They now begin to convert by themselves in London. About five people now gathered money. Five five hundred pounds and gave me to me, which 
which, which brought, gave me about almost 350,000, the money I needed. I did not buy singlet out of it. As we begin, as we, as we got the money, it was exactly how much Abayomi needed and to buy all that he needed that he came to Canada. God, when he supplies, said, he will supply you all your need. All that I needed for him to be here, he provided it. Not surplus. Even when uh, Jesus wanted to pay tithes, when he sent, and they went to go and take fish, go and take fish, and they opened his mouth, they caught the money. It was the money just enough for the for the uh, for the tax of Jesus and his and Peter and the person went to catch the fish and they threw the fish back. You can see God is not he doesn't waste resources. But he said he will provide for your needs. What is your need? What do you think you needed that he cannot provide for? What of Jacob? Jacob, that is, uh, Jacob, the, the is what uh, jo is uh, has about his twelve children, and the one he loves most is Joseph. His brethren now took that boy Joseph. He was seventeen at that time. And sold him out on, on slavery and came back to tell the, their father that he has been killed by an animal. They soaked his clothes into the goat's uh, blood. That do you know this clothes? We saw this thing on the road. Do you know who owned it? Say, ah, it's my son. Ah, he has been eaten up. He was sad. He said, it is through sadness he will go into the grave. Because he thought his, his, his love has been destroyed. But could you believe that God restored it back to him? Yes. That even he became second in command in Egypt. Uh, let me read Genesis 45. Genesis 45, and to read 4 and 5. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Cease near to, uh, Come near me to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye so, you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. Are you hearing me? Yes. I want to tell you, nothing that comes your way that God does not know. God permits, no matter what you are passing through, when you are a child of God, nothing comes for nothing. God's God is in your situation. There is a purpose why you are here. The only thing is that, ask God, why am I in Canada? Why am I here? Open my eyes that I may fulfill your purpose. Many of us, we are not living to fulfill the purpose of God for our life. We want to fulfill our own purpose, our own plan. When we live in our own plan and it's contrary to God, we are not children of God. You are on your own. And life is, is more important than wealth, than whatsoever you want to become. Because by the time we live here, we are not going to live here with anything. We came here naked, and naked we shall go back.
And when you go back where you will be in, in eternity, you are going to give account of what you have done. If I should send my children to farm, take look at this analogy. I should send my children. Let's say I have 10 children, send them to my farm. Go and walk. You do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. I give them assignment. And the one that I said you should begin to up to till the he got there, he, he started running after rabbits, running after doing an animal game, killing them and eating and eating, eating animals and enjoying. And by evening, they, and by evening when they have to come back home, I'm going to ask them, did you do what I asked you to do? Tell me, which report is he going to give me? He didn't do anything. And anyone that has done what I asked him to do, I've said, you are here. Come in. You are my faithful son. And that one that has been stubborn, that went there and did his own, is on his own. Definitely, he will never receive a good report or mercy from me. You have my favor. I, do, do, do you get me? And that is how God is. He sent us here for a purpose. It is you who have to ask God, why am I here? Am I fulfilling his purpose here on earth? If you can fulfill the purpose of God on earth, it is well with you. You are a fulfilled person. Because no matter what you have, they are all vanity. They are vanity upon vanity. And I want to tell you, this is how Joseph knew the purpose. That was why he told them, don't, don't, don't fight yourself. Don't, don't begin to fight yourself. It is God that brought me here, not you. He only used you. And if I know he used you for me to fulfill his purpose while on earth, I shouldn't be grieved with you. But you can see now and hear. Now just go back, go and tell my daddy that I am alive. Go and tell him. And now they took, they took wagons, food and everything, garments. Go to him. Tell him we want him here. That still remaining, they have spent two years of farming. Still remaining five more years. So just come, we have prepared preparing you a place separate for you and your children children that we you will live to see you through in that time of famine and that was what happened as they got there as the children of uh, the the children of uh, the, the, the the children of uh, the brethren of Joseph got to um, Egypt. Amen. Amen. As he got to Egypt, what happened? They saw wonderful thing, and they told uh, uh, Jacob, Jacob, we have seen, we have seen your son Joseph. He is the king in Israel. Say no way. Oh God. Ah, ah. Even king again because they have been here in Egypt. He knows the great nation. My son that was dead, now the ruler of Egypt. Uh, ah, ah, don't tell me what is. He fainted. Let's go to, uh, let's read uh, 26 to 28 of uh, Genesis 45, 26 to 28. And and they told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he is governor over all the land of Egypt. 
And Jacob's heart fainted. For he believed them not. Look, let me tell you. If today, my sister, if today they just tell you, say, you have won $100 million. <coughs> By the time they tell you, say, hey, wait. Not that you call out, you, you are, your heart fainted. You will be revived again. It is the good news was too much. You understand? Not that you will die. You won't die. You will come back. You will be revived. But because it was too much for you, you never expected it. And, and he said, and he got fainted, for he believed them not. 27, and they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons, which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. I say your spirit will revive in Jesus' name. The Lord will make you to be glad in Jesus' name. The Lord will take away sorrow from your life in Jesus' name. That thing that has grieved you from time past, that made you to be grieved, that thing that the enemy has stolen from you, you know, the, the enemy came to steal Joseph from, from Jacob, his love. That brought him sorrow. He and he thought it is finished. But God restored him back. And by the time he, will, he got him back, he got him at the top. That he was, they brought wagons from Egypt. That at that time, wagons with chariots. He said, who am I? Me? From Egypt? And that was how he's, you know, I, I want to tell you that God provides for us through grace, not through merit. It's through grace, not by merit. If God provides for you, not what you, not by qualification. Not by qualification. Not by merit, but by grace. Amen? Amen. I say that God will visit you Amen. at this time in Jesus' name. Amen. And our God provides in his own time. Not our own time. He has his own time for provision. I say, you will, you, it is you. You can defer the time of God. You can defy it. But it will still come to pass. And what, what causes defilement is if one, you have not learned your lesson. If God says, I will bless this man tomorrow. And by that, the following day, you are in a mess. We are God. Feel you have disappointed him. You understand? You, 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 are, you, 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 what he told you not to do, that is what you are finding doing. He will go back. That thing he has brought for you will be withdrawn. But because he has planned it, he will still bring it. Until when you retrieve your step back. When you retrieve your step back. When you retrace back your step to him. Your senses. Your senses. Amen? Amen? So, he provides in his timing. He provides in his own timing. Not yours. Not ours. He has his own time. And if you have a part to play to quicken it, you can quicken it. You can quicken it. For instance, even it's look what is happening in heaven happens here on earth. If a small boy, a child who's supposed to use, I know so many children that spent only three years in secondary school. Why? Because they are very brilliant. All right. When in class one they saw that it was too high. Is higher than this, the people. They took him to class two, ah, uh -uh, to form two, form three, ah, uh ah. -uh. 
By from five, they said, let him sit for the waek. And you will see him doing what is, he, he has left his mates. Which shows he has learned his lesson. No need of dragging him backward. But if he hasn't learned his lesson, if he failed all his tests, his mates will even move. Who are moving according to this to the to, to the precept is moving forward. He will be backward because he did not learn his lesson. So one has part to play in bringing God's power. Either you quicken it or you delay it. But God will still maintain what he planned for your life. Amen? Amen. And then God provision, the way he provides, nobody expects it. That he provides in ways we will, not, we will never expect. Look at the, what I told you about how, the, how that man came to bless me. I never know whom God is going to use. He has his own uh, instruments to use. Water coming out from the rock. I call that man a rock. Which water supposed not to come out of him. But when God wanted to use him, water gushed out from the rock to cool my thirst. And the Lord will make impossibility possible for you. Amen. That where you never expect the, the God's provision will come out unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, because we, there's one song we used to sing that time. God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He works in his own ways that we never know. You cannot limit God. Ever. The only thing is look unto him. You can see Abraham looked unto the heaven. He looked unto the heaven. He did not look at the ground. Man supposed to look into the heaven. Look up to his father. If you see any man that is looking at the ground, it's a goat. God don't look at heaven. He look at the ground. All right? But man, who is a child of God, must look up. It is when you look up that your eyes will be opened. And I say you will see the miracle, the miracle of God in your own time, in Jesus' name. Amen. And God provides abundantly for our spiritual needs, emotional, emotional needs, and our material needs. You can see Jacob, that is called Israel, God provided for his emotional needs. When he saw, he said, he, 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 that was the verse 8. Uh, 28 of that uh, 46. He said, and Israel said, it is enough. When they begin to tell him what uh, whom his son Joseph was in Egypt. He is this. He is that. Hey, you need to see his house. You need to see. He is the one that commanded everything. Say, ah. Say, even what you have told me is enough. He said, and Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. You, you know, he never thought he would ever see him again. So his emotion, emotional needs is to see Joseph. Is to see Joseph before he dies. Not his wealth. There is something different from wealth. And sometimes what you need. If somebody is telling me, oh, Abayam is this, Abayam is this in uh, Canada. Hey, this, oh, God is doing that. Just 
that I may see him. Seeing him is enough for me. Gone Yafiji. If I just see him, it's enough. Then I die. Which shows God he, he has made his emotional needs need. He, he, God met it for him. His emotion was made. All your emotional needs shall be met in Jesus' name. All your spiritual needs shall be met in Jesus' name. Amen. Your material needs shall be met in Jesus' name. Amen. God provides finally in eternity. He provides. That was why when Jesus was going, he said, I will go and prepare a place for you. The place where we are going. Are we the one who built it? Jesus has gone be ahead of us. He prepared that place for us. So that's another provision. Say, where I am, there you shall be also. Amen? Amen. And also, he said, we are the chosen generation. In 1 Peter 2, 9. Say, we are his chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Can you put it there? Can somebody read it for me? First Peter 2 9. Put it on board. First Peter 2 9. Can somebody read it for me? Jesus has made us a new generation. A new, a new creation. I will read it. I'm there already. But you are a chosen generation. Yes. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. Mm. His own special people. Mm -hmm. That you may proclaim the praises of him. Who called you out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. You can see. We are his people. That's what God has called us to. You see, he made us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who are called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. My, my brothers and my sisters, don't belittle yourself. You are a child of God. Don't believe to yourself. One day, the, in Yoruba, they said, Adiefufu, Komore, Lagba. All right? We are different, it's different species. Human beings are human beings, but we are different people. God has given us the power. And that was why one day I was going to church when I was still living outside the church compound. I was going to church and I know I have an evening service with my children inside the car. As we are going, saw a lot of go hold up, crossing from one place. As I got to one place, not knowing there are mosquitoes there. These evils uh, mosquitoes. Now they say I should, I will just, I will just honey, leave the road. The mosquito that was in front of my, I said, I said leave that road. He started to speak. Then I, to, I started to speak. If you know how to speak, the word is in me. I to started to speak in tongues against it. You the devil, I cast you out. I started to speak in tongues. As he saw me speaking in tongues, he cleared the road. See? Go, go. You go. He cleared the way for me. He became my... He cleared the road. So let him go. This one... Not be the one that we can stop. I say, that is whom you are. Nobody can stop you. No demon can stop you. Let us arise because we, we have few minutes to go. 